Okay, this is uh, MXUX. This is a, a video on a SWOT, uh, SWOT analysis, uh, strength, weakness, opportunity, threat for the op Optera, Aptera. Um, this is like a uh, case study thing where you, uh, it's just a, a framework to kind of look at the uh, situation. I thought it would be interesting to do for the Aptera. Um, let's just get started on these slides here. All right, um, we're going to do strengths first. And here's one of the main strengths of the Aptera is self-charging. You know, I, I did another video on this. It's 60% of households can't charge at home. Um, people street park, they live in apartments, they live in condos with homeowners associations that won't allow them to put in a charger. Or, and I have some video on this that I'm going to thinking about doing a video one day. You, you know, you have to have a minimum of 100 amp service in your home. And if it was built after about 65 or so, I would imagine you'd probably have that. But you have to have at least 100 amp service in the United States. And you have to have room to put more breakers in your, in your breaker box. These panels, they have so many slots. Sometimes you can take fat breakers out and put skinny ones in so you got to have 100 amp service minimum i'm not an electrician but this is rule of thumb you got to have room for the breakers okay if you don't have either of those you have to get new new electrical service put in your house or you have to get a new electrical uh, breaker box put in these this are, these are expensive propositions this is besides running the cable uh to the location where the plug is going to be so and this is to get a 220 line. Uh, I think that's called a level two charger at home. And um, now even if you have 100 amp and you have room for the breakers, you know, they have to go through your, a, a licensed electrician has to go through and, and see what your load is. Because you can't, you can't exceed uh, the, the power supply to your house at any given time or it'll heat up the breakers will throw if they don't throw then you'll um, uh, you'll heat up the wires but the point is there's a lot of homes in america that don't meet these requirements and and you know there's an apartment building nearby where i live here and the power was going up it was the lights were dimming and and the power was going out and turning back on they put entirely new service in. they had to run a new wire from the telephone pole and where they just had a little gray box on the wall now they have a box outside that's the size of a job time john it's gigantic it's like a refrigerator it's like a big refrigerator where the where the wire goes in and they put new uh, power supply into the building and new main breakers and they increase the amps and now the, the lights don't dip but i doubt very much if they increase that enough to allow to put a charging circuit in. now um, tesla has a thing where they can have multiple chargers and they'll share the load other chargers don't and they're assuming you're going to charge at night when no one is using energy but you know if you live in an apartment building there people may be using you know it's a complicated thing I'm just saying, if you have a new home or a newer home with a modern electrical system, you probably don't have a problem. That's about 40% of the country in the United States. These are the Tesla buyers. Tesla is skimming the cream off of this uh, charging capability. And um, I, I think, you know, there's going to be a point where, I mean, it's obviously a big market, but still 60% aren't going to be able to charge at home without a major expense. And I've also done some research on this. I have to do a video on this. EV ownership makes no sense without home charging. And if you have to do 110 charging, just a regular outlet charging with a Tesla, it's, it's unmanageable. You cannot even get enough power over the course of an evening uh, you know, after driving back and forth to work four or five days, you're going to be finished. And then you're going to have to spend time at a charger. Now, these third-party chargers, 
putting aside Tesla, which has their own charging network, which is kind of scarce in where I'm living now. I'll just give you an example. I don't know if this was a Blink charger with the brand was. I just saw a thing uh, that in the UK, when they started, they had a flat fee of $11 to charge your car to full. Now that flat fee has gone up to $65. Uh, there was another guy road testing a Mustang E on the, um, on the, on the YouTube there, and uh, he stopped to use a public charger, a couple of them. There were different fees at every charger. Some of them had a flat fee. Some of them charged so much per minute. So this is unregulated. And in many places, these locations set what price they're going to charge. You know, like they put it in a gas station, they decide what they're going to charge for the charging. But anyway, you're leaving yourself open to all these bandits to these charging systems. That And this is going to become a premium they're going to start really if they have a good location whatever i mean i can just see it supply and demand so anyway aptera has the self-charging modules in a reasonable climate uh it can charge and also um the way the the efficiency of the whole system and i'll go through this later uh, allows you to charge reasonably well you can you can charge for three or four hours a night and have plenty of charge to you can get like 40 miles with a 110 just a regular extension cord in an aptera this is the big advantage of the aptera for people that don't have that they have to park on the street that don't have a garage or that don't have covered parking that don't have an ability to uh, put in a charging uh, the level two charger some people don't even have the ability this this Aptera solves this problem brilliantly. And it's, I think it's the main strength of the Aptera. All right, let's go to the next one. And I'm going to try to do a, a video on this charging situation. I don't think people realize, you know, and, and I don't think the total addressable market is as big as it is. I think Tesla is, is skimming these prime customers uh, off the market, and it's going to be harder and well, anyway, I mean, it's a big market. It's, there's not that much penetration now at some point. Okay, next slide. Okay, again, with the Aptera, the, the efficient use of the, the battery, you know, the aerodynamic design. Um, I'm sure they're going to have a special battery design with their, with flux power, I'm sure. I'm, I'm relative, I mean, this is my opinion. Um, that's going to just work great. Anyway, because of the lightweight, because of the aerodynamics, it's, it's a reasonable range with the lower capacity battery, which is a lighter vehicle. And this just simplifies everything. And uh, it gets you to the point where you can have a reasonable 110 volt charging. If you can charge three or four hours a night with a regular extension cord, this is a rough example. Um, then you can use the lowest level Aptera, the 25K, and you can charge with a 110 uh, outlet, and it's completely doable. If you live in a sunny climate, you know, you may not have to charge at all. So, again, uh, the design is part of the efficiency that makes the battery smaller, that makes the charging doable. So this is another real big strength these these are major strengths of the aptera um and um you know it, it, it's beating um tesla on these metrics so this is this is a great concept they have okay another another strength they have is innovative design again state-of-the-art aerodynamics their material science is is going to just be blown up. I'm sure that they're looking at all kind of stuff. I mean, there are so many uh, different fibers they can use now and carbon fibers coming of age and the cost is lowering. Who knows what they're going to come up with exactly. But um, they're going to be able to really, I think they're going to even be able to optimize this vehicle more. And also, innovative design includes the manufacturing techniques. UV light curing of the body. It's a molded body. 
eliminate welding, eliminate the body and weight. This is the equivalent of Tesla molding, uh, you know, with those giant uh, liquid uh, aluminum mold, uh, molding machines they have, molding parts of the car. This is the same thing. Oops, sorry. This is the same thing, but with a uh, different concept, but uh, the same kind of efficiency. And this, these, and this all ties in with the battery. This charges it, ties in with the, the charging. So this is, a, uh, uh, you know, uh, pulling all these pieces together, it, it, uh, it's a major strength for the vehicle. Okay, now, one of the weaknesses. So those were the strengths. I think that's pretty clear. Now let's go into the weaknesses. I have a picture here of the uh, Pontiac Fiera. And uh, this car sold an average of uh, 30,000 cars a year, a, a year uh, during its short lifespan and its troubled lifespan. But it was a very, it, it was a similar car uh, to the Aptera in that it had a plastic body. Uh, it was a two-seater. It had, had a unique, uh, it was the widest, lowest car ever built by General Motors. It had a mid-engine design. It had... 4951 weight distribution, four wheel independent suspension, four wheel disc brakes. It was, again, the widest, lowest car uh, Pontiac built. And John DeLorean, who designed the DeLorean, actually designed that car. But now, even, even with all the problems, and it had engine fires, and there were tracking problems, uh, which all these things were worked out, and they did an engine recall on it. It was still selling 30,000 units a year. And at the end, I think they were, they were up higher than that. I think they were getting close to 100,000 units a year. But anyway, this just, just, just goes to show you that, you know, you can sell this a car like this uh, in the United States. But in this case, we're considering it a weakness, okay? It's a two-seat design limits the total addressable market okay and so you don't have the back seat for the, the child seat you don't have the back seat for the dog or although maybe a dog can fit back there um you don't have the two kids seats in the back so it's it's limited to being a second car okay for running errands a commuter car a first car perhaps like the fiero but more catering toward the youth market where they don't have family concerns. So it's definitely not a family car. And um, that's, you can consider that to be a weakness. So again, and on the Fiero proved that you could sell that car. Of course, it's a different time. I think uh, the Aptera is probably a better design. But anyway, it's still a weakness. The two seat is a weakness. Okay. We got a picture of the stealth fighter there. Um, it's got a polarizing design. Okay. There, it again limits the TAM. Okay. People either hate it or love it. Okay. They can't wait to see one. They can't wait to sit in one or they would never be caught dead in one. Um, unconventional buyers will be interested. Traditional buyer buyers are going to avoid it. Alco also, uh, despite the early the success of the of the last version of the, uh, oops, sorry, of the uh, Aptera, um, this is a, this is untried. This is a new, new. It's the new new. You know, will it work? Um, it's polarizing design, and that, uh, you know, people are saying, well, how is this thing even going to work? I one guy asked me, he goes, well, what, uh, don't the wheels heat up? You know, no, the wheels don't. I mean, the wheels have cooling lines in them and so on and so forth. So uh, this is what people are thinking about this car. They, people don't even understand how these hub motors work. Um, so in any case, and a lot of people feel that if it's not a family car or if it doesn't have the potential to be a family car, I guess as recent that it's not a car. So this is another weakness. 
which is the other side of the coin of the, the effective design. So, nonetheless, a weakness, a, a weakness, a polarizing design. Okay, this is a biggie. There's no charging network from Aptera for the Apteras. Okay, it's limited to third-party chargers. I went over this earlier. Unknown charging costs. This is a total variable. You have no idea what your costs are going to be for this car. If you have to use a third or any electric car, if you have to use a third-party charging stations on a regular basis, you have no idea. You also have no idea of whether you're going to really have availability. Are they going to be used? Is 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 the thing going to be damaged? Um, there's a whole lot of questions that come into into play with this. Are they going to be convenient? You know, I mean, I, I did a video here of going over, you know, how you know the false image that's represented of the charging public charging network. It's not good at all, really. Um, also, you know, will this limit the area of use of the car? I mean, if you want to go any long distance, are you going to be able to do it? So this is, this is a key attribute that buyers look at. Uh, I found from my research as far as when they're going to buy a car, uh, an electric vehicle, you know, are they, you know, because you, you need a charging network. And, uh, I think this is something Rivian and some of these other players are going to be faced with. I think Tesla is so far ahead on this. Now, there's been plenty of talk and winky emojis about it being part of the Tesla charger uh, network, and uh, it shows it to Tesla. Now, if it is, uh, and, you know, I've, I've alluded to this myself, if it is, it's going to be fantastic because this is going to be, you know, the superchargers of the level two chargers. They're going to be able to charge the Aptera in little or no time because of the small size of the battery. It's going to be a fantastic thing for the future owners of this car if it does become part of the Tesla network. But we don't know that. So right now it's a weakness. And anybody considering a new car, they're going to, they're going to go for Tesla, right? Because you're going to say to Aptera, well, I don't know if it's going to be on Tesla or not. So until that's announced, this is, this is a real weakness also for the car. Okay, now let's go into opportunities. You know, I got this guy here. All right, I don't know, that's a stock picture. But he's our new EV consumer. Um, awakens a new EV consumer, yeah. Uh, so this is, this is a whole new market segment. It's different than anything that's out there. I know the Archimoto is out there, but the Archimoto is basically a motorcycle. It's not weatherproof. It doesn't have self-charging. It's a totally, basically a totally different vehicle uh, than the Aptera. So anyway, this is going to spark the imagination of a whole new segment of people that might not even have, have considered a, a, an EV. It's, uh, it's the new, new thing. It's very unconventional. Uh, it's function over form I have there. There's, there's engineering breakthroughs all over the place on this thing between the hub motors, the body design, the, the cooling in, integrated into the body. And it's not like anything out there. So because it's a whole new product, you know, it's like uh, a new web service or it's like, um, you know, you know, when they invented Facebook or some of these other things, Instagram, what, well, who's going to use it? What are they going to use it for? Well, there's a, there, there's a market out there for it that we don't even know about yet um, that's going to develop itself uh, because it's so different and, and because it's so new. So I think it's there's going to be a whole segment of consumers uh, that it's going to, um, you know, knock their uh, consumer balance off a little bit till they get one this is my opinion anyway i think it is going to open up a, a a totally new sector that uh, these other vehicles aren't aren't are not addressing and conventional vehicles aren't addressing okay this is one that i think is is overlooked by everybody 
should they not I, I mean i don't know if they're going to detune this if they're going to push the uh performance aspect of this vehicle but i can tell you i've done a lot of research on these hub motors i've done a lot of work on F, of uh, on lordstown motors who's using the same motors the same motor manufacturer and you know these motors in in both cases lordstown they're going to detune them I, I i think aptera mentioned that they're going to limit the, the highway speed on this too but i gotta tell you depending on the model of this motor they produce 150 horsepower motor you've got three motors if you get the three motor drive on the aptera that's going to be 450 horsepower on a very lightweight vehicle and an aerodynamic vehicle. And that's enough in itself. Then these have individual computer control units on each motor and there's traction control, which is going to keep the wheels from spinning and so forth. And, uh, this, this is a big plus. Now, the other thing that people aren't talking about, which, you know, may be more into play with the, with the uh, endurance pickup truck, is the torque vectoring. Torque, torque vectoring, you know, what it does is uh, you get three wheels, okay? You can have the left front wheel going three miles an hour. You can have the left, uh, the right front wheel going 10 miles an hour and you can have the rear wheel going eight miles an hour so in other words not only physically turning the wheels will cause the car to, uh, to turn direction but this torque vectoring will actually use the power of the motors to turn to reposition the car and this is this is something that they use in f1 cars and it's pretty fantastic you're also going to have all-wheel drive so you know, 450 horsepower, traction control, torque vectoring, all-wheel drive, you know. Now, these motors, again, I believe, and they did the testing, and if you look at some of my other videos about the uh, Lordstown Endurance and Lordstown Motors, you can see some of these tests. I have video clips. They put these hub motors on a BMW. I think it was a BMW. Uh, SUV or a, a you know a small SUV. What do they call those? You know the crossover vehicles. Anyway, they were getting under three three point three seconds on zero to sixty. Three point I think less than three point three seconds. This is a much lighter car. Of course, it's going to have one less wheel, but I think you know you could easily expect that kind of performance. This is. This is an opportunity for this car. I mean, this is a real hot rod. It's good. It can be. I mean, uh, no one's uh, marketing in that sense, marketing the car in that sense, but it really is. And um, I think that's uh, something that can really, I mean, this thing is going to, I'll tell you, have to see how it does on the track. I think it's going to do very good, oddly enough. The Fiero did very good on the track as well. It was a very winning uh, GTU uh, road race car, you know, before its de demise, because they were worried, uh, the, the word was they were worried it was going to take over the Corvette market because with the six cylinder. Anyway, the point is, this car here is, a, is a, you know, I don't want to call it like a, a ninja motorcycle, but um, I'll tell you what. Aerodynamic. This is like an F1 car. You know, this is, and they're going to have a carbon, I think they're going to sneak some carbon fiber in there. I mean, this thing is going to be a hot rod if they want it to be. Anyway, it's an opportunity. Okay. This is, this is another opportunity that the uh, Aptera presents. At the low end, I think it's 26K. You can look it up. This is this is a high value electric vehicle. It's low cost. It's got a, a mass market potential. I don't know if it's the cheapest EV you can buy right now, but it's got to be one of the cheapest. Um, 
I don't know if there's any subsidies that are going to come, but I think even without the subsidies right now, it's one of the cheapest. And it's affordable. And you can see by the pre-orders that, that people are ordering it. So now if, um, <coughs> excuse me, Tesla just lowered the price on the Model 3. They say they're going to get the $7,000 tax credit. It may, the price may come down on that as well. Uh, but for right now, this is one of the lowest cost um, uh, cool uh, electric vehicles you can get. I mean, I'm sure you can get one of these little Chinese mini cars. I, you know, who would, who would, you know, something I would not personally, I would not feel safe in that. And I would not feel that it was a good expense. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that would hold up. Anyway, um, let's go through the threats now. The Aptera is pre-production, okay? They get a alpha or beta prototype. They do not have any mass-produced vehicles. They do not have a line running. They got Sandy Monroe working on it, the best in the biz, but still... You know, I went over this with the, with one of the um, last videos I did on the Aptera about the production they were modeling at this point uh, after the GM, uh, after the Viper. You know, can it be mass produced? You, you know, we can't say that we know that. You know, can it be mass produced at a profit? We can't say that we know that we know that. Um, they got a roller that's not a pusher that's a real car they have and i know they've been running it all over the place but will the concept work in the real world you know um, i'm pretty confident it will i think um you know there's potential there for some maybe the molded body to fail or stress cracks or something of that nature but who knows so these are questions people are asking, you know, will it work in the real world? You know, if they buy one, you know, is the company going to go under because it's not making any profit? And there's already people, um, you know, some people have contacted me regarding some of the videos asking questions. You know, there are people that are already you know, future short sellers on this to attack the SPAC or the IPO or the stock on this and um you know they're they're already lining their ducks up so uh, this is a threat you know um this is one of the reason i did the video on this on the on the founder's uh, background i was curious myself but anyway and and of course it's pre-production will, will they run out of money before they hit production you know um the first time they were up for loans in a Terra version one in which was 2008 or 2005 that loan they were up for was 120 million okay i think tesla got 450 million you can look at my video on that these are the levels of um cash it takes to launch you know vehicle production in the united states this is the amount of money they have to to raise and um although i'm I personally i'm very confident I'm, I'm very optimistic about this you know i think the strengths outweigh the weaknesses and threats here but um these are all threats um you know can it be mass produced will it make a profit will it work these are all questions you know people are asking when the when the short sellers attack i mean that, that's a threat they're going to be facing too they should be prepared um to respond to these um short sellers who who may come out of the woodwork early who knows but certainly uh, you know if you learned anything from um tesla but I think this is very real. I've gotten some emails and things from people that are questioning. Uh, and they need, Aptera, are you out there listening? 
Anthony, Fambro, you got to think ahead, have a response team, have some kind of thing set up to respond to these uh, short attacks. I would, I would start now, okay? Anyway, and will they run out of money? I'm pretty confident that they, they're going to squeak by on the money. But, you know, these are all questions that people are asking. So these are all threats that are facing. I think there's a lot of people, as evident, by the pre-orders that like this designer that are behind this product. So, but again, these are threats that, that we're facing here. Now here's the big uh, elephant in the room that nobody's talking about. The 25K Tesla that they're gonna make in China and export all over the world. Yikes. Now with, with the, you know the experience tesla has this this is likely going to have a back seat maybe not but it's it's going to be a two-door i think it probably will have a small back seat um you know the battery's going to be good they may make it out of one casting i mean i'm sure the design is going to be great so it's a concept now and they haven't done it and you know I am personally am worried about the you know Tesla's exposure in China. I don't know, you know, it's um, I'm not going to get into it here, but I think uh, you know manufacturing in China. I don't know. It's it's the one uh, Achilles heel of Tesla. I feel right now, but anyway, this is a concept now, and it's you know it hasn't you know look at the uh, cyber truck, you know. They got a roller on that. They got a beta, and, and it's still not made. So this, who knows? But, you know, they built a factory in one year in China. Anyway, about the same price as the uh, entry-level Aptera, full-blown charging network, established brand, quality manufacturer, you know. I mean, you look at the problem BMW's having with these i3s that, that were made a couple of years ago now. I've, You know, I mean... It, it, Tesla has done a really good job. The, the problems that other EV manufacturers are having after a couple of years, or even right away, the Volkswagen's all brick, the computer systems. I mean, Tesla is really a quality manufacturer, and they do not have the problems that these other EVs have. And uh, again, it's the backseat hatchbacks. It's not exactly a three-box design, but it's a conventional automobile. It's a familiar design. This is a major threat to Aptera as well now you know of course the you know if you look at the strengths of the aptera it's the self-charging concept um, that's going to be the main uh it's going to address that market that this this car is not going to address or it's going to be harder for this car to address anyway that's the big one and how soon will this roll out? Will the Aptera come out first? You know, when you're weighing it, you know, oh, do I get a Tesla? Do I get an Aptera? You know, anyway, this is the main threat. So they got to work on their marketing, get their unique selling points down. And uh, anyway, they seem to be doing a good job right now at Aptera. But this is the one to look for. Uh, I think the one... One weakness here is that this is going to be made in China, and who knows, there could be trade problems with China. Who knows, tar some vehicles manufactured there. There's a whole lot of other things that could happen. Um, but anyway, that is, I think, the major, major threat facing Aptera. So they got to come up with a strategy and tactics to counter that. But it's vaporware now anyway. So, that's it. That's the, um, the presentation. And uh, I don't know. Oh, the creepy music isn't playing. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, that's the presentation. I hope you like it. And... Um, it's just a framework uh, if you look at it like a case study. So I hope you like the um, hope you like the video. 
and uh, that's it. All right, guys. 